people are like, yeah, the stock is down, that we're doing crazy important things, and the alternatives suck. Do you see a recession coming around the globe? Do you see a recession coming here? I, I don't know. It's, it's very hard at all. A lot of that's definitional. But what I do see is that people are scared about energy outside of America. They're, 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 more, they're so scared about the macro uh, political conditions that no one wants to talk about them. Their enterprises are built for a static, unified world of peace. Uh, and the balance sheets, obviously, are not often prepared for what's going to happen, which I think is going to be pretty bad the next couple years, politically, economically. You know, when we were talking about uh, the, real, the reality that uh, nuclear weapons are on the table three and two months ago, of course, that was derided. Um, the, 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 the general belief I had just comes from building a, a software business and seeing software in action in war, where software plus heroism can really slay the giant. And I think, I know the Russians just underestimated the power of kinetic plus software plus heroism. And then I believe it's a zero sum game in, in Russia and there is no ability for Putin to lose. He can't just fail at, at war and then retire, which is what we're used to in democracy. You know, politicians fail and then they, we have another politician. The reason why I was sounding the alarm at Davos, and then again when we talked uh, to much derision, was simply this combination of uh, American software, the way we build software, plus a kind of heroism that is very unusual, uh, would outperform uh, the giant of spend. And that leads to just this jarring reaction. This is going to change the way war is fought. Because here you have a tiny country with very little assets, and they, right. in the use of software and heroism, you can push off and win against a, a Goliath. You keep saying use of software. Well, explain that. Well, the, the this, basic, this is the Palantir part right. of the story. Yeah, the yeah, part that we're not allowed to talk about is um, you, you just, in classic warfare, it just comes down to last uh, post-World War II. America spends 800 billion, Russia spends, I don't know, 65 billion, but Russia thinks half of it is at waste, and they're willing to do things on the human rights front we right. would never do. So they think it's parity. You know, America has been fighting wars, most of which I've been against for 20, 30 years. We've learned a lot about how to fight wars. The, the thing is that, and so we have this great knowledge of what it means, and part of that is something that is, is interestingly very cheap to produce, but it really is best produced in the West. Why is software best produced in the West? We were talking about employment and labor. In terms of your employment and being able to hire talent, what are you seeing right now? Look, bad times. How easy or hard it is. Plus, by the way, I imagine there are a lot of employees sitting looking at the stock price saying, I'm underwater or I'm, you know, I have half of what I thought I had. Well, look, we built Palantir. Uh, we, are, we are private for almost 16 years, and our share price on the non-private market was going down. So, like, these times, in the end, bad times help us also because the alternatives end up being, like, our main competition is uh, I want to be a cockroachholder.com who recruits our people. That's our actual competition, a startup that is two days away from failing, but engineers don't know it. Those companies aren't getting funding. And so, like, instead of going to mycockroachtrap.com, people are like, yeah, the stock is down, that we're doing crazy important things, and the alternatives suck. Do you see, in terms of clients, though, right now, spending, I mean, on the corporate side and even on the government side, given what's happening in the economy? We, we, we see a big difference between U.S. and, to be frank, uh, probably too frank, the, the, the U.S. is just completely different than everywhere else. Our U.S. business has grown 67 percent a year the last three years, from 233 million to just over a billion. The rest of the world, yeah, people react. Americans, for all of our foibles, we react to bad times by rolling up our sleeves and adapting. The rest of the world has trouble with adapting at the pace we adapt. So yes, our business is being, is being negatively afflicted by the inability to, uh, in other countries to adapt the way they adapt, we adapt in America. On the other hand, you know, we're, at, we're an 18 year old business, the last three years our largest, our, uh, the American segment is growing 67%, despite me as a front man. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it, it, maybe if we, they, you know, we, we have a more successful front, man, we can even, I don't know, I'm not planning to go anywhere, but it's like, we're, we're, despite or because of our various disabilities, we're growing 67% a year in the most important, most interesting market in the world. And yes, we, we are not growing that way in Germany and France and other places. And I don't expect to grow that way. I do think there'll be a handoff. What I think is going to happen is we're going to have a couple years of terrible times. Uh, those companies that are the most robust will survive and thrive.